Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. Amen. I'm glad that this weekend has come to an end and we're starting a new week. I love the newness of life and I love the newness of days. I love the newness of God and God's timing and God's purpose and plan for your life and my life is very exciting to me. I don't know about you, but every day is a new day. So we'll be glad and we'll rejoice in it and we'll be just here. Um, not wondering of what's going to happen, but we're going to dare to hope in what's going to happen. Because when you place your hope and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're on the right path. Because we know for sure that God will never leave us, let us down, forsake us. He will never abandon you or me. He would never ask us to do something and not give us the power to get it done. He would not leave us in a corner all by ourselves and just go away and never come, to, come back. The Bible says, whoever like approaches God, amen, he will no way turn them away, amen. So whoever approaches God um, sincerely um, can hope and dare to hope and dare to trust, amen, and God. So this is going to be good because it's um, based on one scripture in the Old Testament, amen, that has a lot to do with daring to hope, continually hoping and trusting and having um, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not a faith in pie in the sky stuff. I'm talking about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, him and him alone uh, will get you through any situation that you could ever face, will get you through any problem that you're currently facing or that you faced before. You could testify. You could let everybody know, listen, I was this way and that way. I was down and out. I needed finances. I needed this. I needed that. Um, but for sure, for sure, 100% guaranteed, God came through in my life. How do you know it was God, Sam? How do you know it was God for whoever is saying this? Amen. Well, you knew it was God because you placed your hope and your trust and your faith in Jesus. And he did something in your life. I used to place my faith, hope, and trust in other things, in myself, and idols, and all kind of other things of this world, and nothing ever happened good. It always kept on happening bad. Amen. So, dare to hope on the morning diva with your brother Sam Rock. Let me just greet some people this morning. Then we're going to take uh, a couple of minutes, amen, to pray. And then we're going to give you a minute to share this out. Good morning, brother Damien. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the morning devo. Amen. Monday morning, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Michael Jakes. So let's pray, and hopefully um, you'll share this out when we give you the minutes to share this out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. This day is a new day, so we will be glad and rejoice in it. I pray health, strength, protection to every single person that's logging on, every single person that's going to watch this at their own convenience, every single person that's connected to this Bible study group, every single person that has a family, that has blood in their veins, bones in their body. I pray for all those people, Lord God, that have eyes to see and ears to listen. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection, supernatural increase in finances, a breakthrough in their life. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this morning Devo will touch many lives by way of Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will save. You, Lord God, will redeem, sanctify. You, Lord God, will purify. And you, Lord God, will change and transform our hearts and minds according to your will and your purpose for our lives. So I speak life concerning all things living, and I speak death to those things that are trying to bring death unto us in the name of Jesus. And I ask for, forth and I pray forth um, warring angels, you know, worshiping angels, ministering angels to do what they are assigned to do in my life and in the lives of everybody that's watching. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. How many people can say amen for that prayer? Listen, trust, dare to hope, trust and believe. I'm going to give you a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we'll be in the first scripture. Well, the only scripture for today, unless the Lord wants to add some more scriptures um, to this morning Devo. Amen. But we'll be in Lamentations. I believe it's chapter three. Lamentations chapter three. I'm going to give you time to get into Lamentations. I don't know when's the last time you read Lamentations. But Lamentations chapter three, verse 21 through 24. And I'll give you a minute to share this out. Well, I'll be sharing it out myself. Amen. Lead by example. And I'll be right back.
wow, wow, that minute, man. And I, I'm so, I was so like trying to rush and share this in that minute that I started sharing this to other groups that are going to be like, what in the world is this guy sharing a, a morning devotional on a Lehigh Valley like um, shopping group? Um, my bad. So I shared some um, to a group, to a business group, and they're going to be like, oh, let's kick them out. Well, you never know, amen. That might not have been a mistake. That might be what God was directing me to do and share, amen. So, you know, I dare to hope that whoever this is shared with, that God would do a great and amazing thing, amen, in their lives. So I'm going to share a little bit more. Uh, forgive me, amen. Um, I have to get um, my auto sharing up again and running so that way you can share out. So as soon as I go live, it'll share out to all the groups at one time amen there is an app for that and i just have to redo it um because this bible group has grown um all glory to god so um doing it manually will take more than a minute amen so uh, i think i'm done god's children yes so thank you to all the groups as a matter of fact that allow me to share this video out um, to your group. I pray a hedge of protection. I pray supernatural blessings to you and all the members of your group in the name, the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you so much. Amen. I know you don't have to share these videos out, um, but you dare to trust and you dare to have hope and that these messages, these morning devotionals are not crazy, but they're sound and it's doctrine and sound and it's, you know, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. So amen. I don't take that uh, for granted, I thank you so much for sharing this out, amen, and helping the ministry, because um, my, my main objective is this year was to forget, or try to forget every single excuse, amen, get rid of every single excuse for me not to believe in what God can do in my life, and in everybody's life as well, amen, get rid of those excuses, we have a month left in 2020 and i know a lot of people are saying thank the lord 2020 has been a tough year amen for many of us um if not all of us but many of us have had a hard time um this year so 2021 um people say it could be better people could say it'd be worse listen i dare to hope that god will have something in store for 2021 um, that will give us hope that will give us a new way of trusting in him that will give us um, more energy, more power in the things that he has for us to do in this life. Amen. By way of his Holy Spirit. That's all I'm saying. So dare to hope. Amen. Let's get into it. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 to 24. Amen. 21 to 24. The Bible says, The faithful Lord of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. I will hope in him. That's a declaration, amen, that I could say this every day, every morning, that the faithful love of the Lord never ends. You ever been in a relationship where someone has told you they love you to the very end and they're no longer with you. You're no longer in that relationship. It didn't go according to their forever. Well, actually it went, you know, according to their forever. My forever and God's forever are different. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Never ends. That's a declaration you could speak that every day of your life. Every morning, every time you wake up, speak it out because it's true. You know, if anybody, if anybody loves you, it's God, it's the Lord Jesus, amen? He will love you with that never-ending love. And his mercies, look, what is God's mercy? Anybody want to take a chance to see, to let me know what God, God's mercy is? What do you think God's mercy is all about? Do we need God's mercy? Do we need his mercy or do we just get a free pass? His mercies never cease. This is something that it's amazing to a believer to believe that his mercies never cease. They never end. His mercies are good every single time. Well, God's mercy is him holding back what we deserve. 
Amen. And his grace is giving us what we don't deserve. So what do I deserve? Well, before Jesus came and rescued you, rescued you and rescued me and saved me and saved you, we deserved death. The wages of sin is death. The penalty for breaking God's law is death. But we know that Jesus came to pay that sin debt. And he did it on the cross. But God, he did it on the cross. I always mess this up because the camera thing right here. He's no longer on the cross. But amen. I'm rocking this sweater. Amen. Because my brother Raheem um, makes them. Amen. If you want some information about these sweaters, he has different styles, different colors. Amen. Very good quality. I already washed this like twice already. And everything's still intact. Amen. So it's all there. So if you want more information on Brother Rahim's work, amen, with the sweaters and shirts and all that, um, just inbox me and I'll give you his information. But God, amen, Jesus came not to make good people better or not to make bad people good. Jesus came to pay the sin debt, amen, that we owed. And trust me, we can't afford it. He paid the sin debt that we owed. That was his mercy, right upon our lives mercy he said well i'll pay the sin debt i'm the only one i could pay it anyway so he had mercy on my life and mercy on your life and paid the sin debt and then his grace was giving eternal life promising eternal life whoever believes in the name of the lord jesus christ whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so his mercies never cease his mercy is God stopping what we do deserve, not giving us what we do deserve, amen? And grace is him giving us what we don't deserve. So his mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. Not just like a, a fly-by-night thing, man. His, his mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. It's not like, oh, you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah. You know, I'm supposed to wake up. Listen, every time I wake up, I open my eyes and say, thank you, Lord. I'm here again another day. Um, maybe I could start all over fresh. You know, last week almost blew my testimony, getting into a big, I lost my temper, almost got into a fight with some my neighbor over something. Um, but I went by way of Holy Spirit. God convicted me and says, okay, before you jump in the shower, before this night is over, you need to go and ask that man for forgiveness. Although I felt every I felt that I was right in every way, you know, but I did it anyway because what would be the difference um, between a man that just lost his temper and doesn't ask for forgiveness or a man that lost his temper and got convicted by Holy Spirit God and God gave me mercy, he showed grace, and he did all this stuff in my life and he's asking me to do something and I said, nah, I'm not going to do it because, you know, uh, I'm right and he's wrong. I did it anyway, regardless of how I felt. I did it anyway. Ask the man for forgiveness. And God did something through that, through that act of kindness. Amen. God bless you, Titi Jenny. Good morning. Good Monday morning, right? So we're in Lamentations chapter 3, 21 and 24. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. If you ever want to restart, I know a lot of times we need to restart. We wish like last um, week would go away, but we went through last week already. We can't go back there anyway. But you know what I'm saying? Like if you had like a bad day, a bad week, bad month, a bad year, you're always asking, man, I wish there was a refresh. You're always asking God, can you give me a re so start over, start over? You know that he actually gives us a start over, a chance to start over every single day, every morning, every day. He gives us a chance to start fresh because if we dare to hope, amen, we should be daring to trust in his word. We should be daring to listen to what he's saying. We should be daring to do what he says to do. Sometimes it's not easy. Um, last week, I had to put my faith to my feet <laughs> and walk to a neighbor's house and be like, listen, I lost my temper. That's not who I really am. I'm not the, you know, the guy that's all in people's face and, you know, want to throw down real quick. Although I felt that I had the right to do that, it was not what God wanted me to do. So, his mercies, his plans, his faithfulness, his love is new for us every single day. Each morning, 
So I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. What's an inheritance? Listen, uh, a lot of people want their inheritance now while there are people in their family that has the key to their inheritance. So if I ask somebody in my family, I want my inheritance now, I'm literally telling the people drop that so I could get what I what I need. You ever read the story of the prodigal son? The prodigal son was in the home um, that he had everything, servants, food, money, everything was there, but he wanted to get his inheritance so he could go and get crazy and act wild. You can read that in the scripture. It's called the prodigal son. So when he went to his dad and asked his dad, listen, I want my inheritance now. He was basically telling his dad, listen, drop that. Drop that because I want my money. Um, but the father didn't drop that. He didn't. He was still alive, but he gave his son what his son wanted. He gave him his inheritance. And what did he do with that inheritance? He went out, party, drank, went, went buck wild with women and everything. Ended up eating in the pig slop where the pigs eat and all this stuff. And then... He came to his senses. He was like, the heck am I doing? I'm out here um, eating with the pigs when I had a home, a roof over my head, food, servants. I was living good. And because I wanted what I wanted now, right? He wasn't caring about his family, his, his brother that was still in the house, his dad, all that. He wasn't. He just wanted to live his life wild. He got his inheritance, blew his whole inheritance on party life and all that other stuff. And then realized while he was eating with the pigs that he had a good life. He didn't need his inheritance right away. But how many people know that sometimes we want what we want right away. We're not daring to hope in God. We want what we want right now. We're not waiting for God. We're not trusting in his mercy. We're not trusting in his, his faithful love that never ends. So sometimes we jump in our own flesh, jump in our own minds. We say, I want my stuff now. I can't wait for God to do something in my life. I need to do it now. This man and the prodigal story, that young man went through that. And it's showing us that God is honest with us. Amen. That's why I don't understand why people don't believe in the scriptures and the Bible or anything like that. It says it, it's God is honest with us. Amen. And I don't know what just happened to my screen. Let me try to get back here. And I don't know. God's word is good all the time. Amen. And for sure, uh, we can trust in his word. Amen. And I'm noticing some things on my camera. Excuse me. I'm, I'm a little crazy when it comes to the camera. So. So I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. When you say you're going to do something, especially when God is involved and when God is in the picture, if you say you're going to trust God, listen, don't be afraid to trust God. When you say a thing about God, do a thing about God. Because I know for sure if God says a thing over my life and in my life and over your life, he's going to do it. He's going to accomplish everything that he said. Every promise that he gave you, he's going to accomplish those promises in your life. Now, ask me when he's going to do it. Go ahead, ask me. I don't know when he's going to do it. But if he says he's going to do it, he will do it. The timing, that's all on him. Amen. Boy, do I wish that when he promised me something that it would happen right away. Sometimes it does happen right away. I'll hear from the Lord and with, before the day is over, before the week is over, before the month is over, before the year is over, uh, that promise comes true. But sometimes there's other promises that took 15, 16 years before we saw the promise of God come. So I don't know. I can't. I couldn't tell you unless the Lord reveals specifically how long it's going to take. Unless he reveals that, then I personally don't know how long his promise will take to come to life in our lives. Amen. But if he says a thing, he will do a thing. So you realize immediately after this was this verse, right? The prophet Jeremiah is grieving of his home, Jerusalem. So we already declare that God is faithful. Well, the word declares it, right? I'm just agreeing. I'm daring to hope in the word. That his mercies never cease. Greatest is faithfulness, right? We're giving God play, praise, glory, honor. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. And then immediately after this verse, uh, the prophet Jeremiah is grieving the destruction of his home in Jerusalem. What does that mean? What does that mean when it happens to us? Listen, it happened to me. Praising the Lord, honoring God, and the next thing you know, children are dying in my life. Um, 
you know, stuff is happening in my family. I'm just down the third is happening. And I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't I just give you glory, honor, worship and praise? And the very next day or that same day after I do it, or it could be right after church or it could be during church, you get a call or whatever. Does that mean that God has shipped out of your life that broke out and like he doesn't want anything to do with you no more? Or does that mean that we're living in a fallen world where things happen? And listen, the dare to hope part in this morning devotion that I hope you get is even if something does happen, while you give glory, honor, worship, and praise to God, even if, even if something does happen today, tomorrow, during your prayer life, during your prayer time, um, during your church, during church life, if something happens that is not, you know, right, it's not good, we st- we should still dare to hope in the declaration that we just made that God, His love is never ending his grace his mercy his faithfulness amen and your declaration today and every day should be the lord is my inheritance therefore i will hope in him when you hope in jesus when you hope in god that hope will never disappoint you but when you hope in the things of this world you know you played a lottery you spent like thousands of dollars before you won like five hundred dollars and you're happy about the five hundred dollars um a bit in the business world that that doesn't that's not return on investment. Oh, I spent a thousand dollars and I won five hundred. You lost more than five hundred dollars. <laughs> you lost really fifteen hundred dollars if you think about it, the time and everything um, that it took for to win that thing. So if you place your trust in the lottery and things of this world, those things will always fail you. But when you place your hope and trust in God, God will never fail you. Good good morning, Sister Joyce. Amen. God bless you and your family as well. And joy and peace to you and Victor as well in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what do you get about that? Especially about Jeremiah. Jeremiah is declaring things and saying things. Then he goes home and his home is destroyed in Jerusalem. How can you apply that to your life? Listen, I, I, I'm right there. Sometimes in my life things have happened after, you know, a mountaintop experience with God. And then you get off that mountain, you come down to the valley and you're like, oh man, look what just happened. Look what just happened. And I have to dare to hope and trust in who I just gave praise, honor, and worship to. A lot of people, amen, and if I'm not careful, this could happen to me. But a lot of people, when, when it's good, they trust and believe in God. They're preaching, they're ministering to people, man. They're talking about Jesus all the time in the good times. But when the bad times, when the bad times start happening... Um, they're like, Jesus who? I'm going back to my old thing, man. God disappointed me. He failed me. I know people that actually came up to me and they said, listen, I tried that whole Christianity thing. It didn't work. I tried church. It didn't work. I tried Jesus. It didn't work. And I always used to be like, what does that mean you tried Jesus? What does that mean you tried church? It's like, did you go to a gym and have a gym membership and you only went once? That's a true story for me. Um, you only went once when you were paying the whole Um, year of membership fees and because you never went and never saw results in your body because you never went or you never had um, dedicated your time to the gym are you saying that you never dedicated your time to the church you never dedicated your time to jesus and the bad things are happening now and now you're you're bouncing because you thought that little obligation or the little checklist you had of going to church or reading a scripture a day was enough for you to have a relationship with a living, loving, holy, just God? Is that what you're really saying? Or you're saying that um, you were deep into the things of God and then and you found out, because I hear this a lot too, you found out it was not true. So what is true? What did you find out that was true above the truth of God? So, you know, when people say those things, I always listen. I don't be disrespectful because everybody deserves to be listened to. Amen. I'm not the one with all the answers. And I surely don't know everything about everybody's life, um, but God does. So it applies to my life when immediately after or immediately before, amen, preceding means before, uh, immediately before I made a declaration to God, I probably went through something. And immediately after I, I declared something from God, I would probably go through something too. But before or after, wherever it is, wherever you find yourself in life, Oh, man, Um, right before I made this declaration, I was going through it. I almost lost my life. My health was whatever the case may be. You know, you were broke 
And then you started making declarations. You dared to hope, even though you were facing bad time, you were facing trouble, trials, whatever the situation, even through that, you dared to hope in the word of God. You dared to hope in Jesus. You dared to hope and trust and have faith in the Lord. And even before you made this declaration, you know about bad stuff and bad times. Before and even after you go through the bad time, you can still dare to hope and trust in, in God. Listen, the preachers, me, everybody that's speaking about Jesus that are human will fail. But who I'm talking about will never fail. That's the whole that's the whole kicker of being a Christ follower. People say, oh, I'm going to believe everything this man is saying. That's not a good idea. Believe everything that God said. That's a great idea. 100 percent of the time when you trust God's word, 100 percent of the time God's word will be true and it's always true. So trust in that. I'm just I'm just the messenger. But the message is that Jesus is faithful the Lord, his faithfulness never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness, right? Um, his mercies begin each morning. Every morning, God's mercy is new or fresh. And so you can say to yourself right now, the Lord is my inheritance. Go ahead and say, the Lord Jesus is my inheritance. The Lord God, Yahweh, is my inheritance. God himself is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Not hope in an it. Amen. You hoping in him, the Lord. Remember, we have one father, one son, one Holy Spirit. We have three who's and one what. And that one what is God Almighty. Jehovah. You know, Yahweh. So how can you apply this to your life? Preceding your time of sharing with God your life sharing with others about God, proceeding before um, you said this prayer or you made a prayer, you made declarations, you're like, man, I know what happened before, but I'm still trust and dare to hope in God's word. You could apply it to your life today. Yesterday could have been a situation in your life. Today is a new day. You woke up. When I open my eyes, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And then I, I listen with my ears to see if everybody else is moving or around in my house, thanking God. Every, I never know, and you don't know either, what's going to happen from day to day. But I dare to hope in God's word day to day. Amen. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. If if you dare to hope and trust in God's word every day, then whatever happens before you're trusting in God and after you're trusting in God, whatever, whatever happens in between, amen, you can dare to hope in him. So what situations... Or relationships in your life can you apply this to think about it you could apply this to every single situation and every single relationship in your life now if it's a toxic relationship get out of there and run amen you know we can love people from a distance we don't have to be always connected to people that are really taking us down they're putting loads on our shoulders that shouldn't be there and that could be a boyfriend a girlfriend a husband and wife believe it or not yeah i just said it husband and wife that you need counseling or whatever situation i'm not promoting any divorce or anything. I'm just saying it could be those people that are closest to you, amen, that could be a toxic thing going on. And you're not addressing it. You're trying to sweep it under the rug. We could have situations like that in our lives with, with relationships, situations, money situations, whatever, health situations, whatever the case. Before, amen, before when you were going through the things, dare to hope. After you went through the thing or you're still going through the thing, dare to hope and trust. Amen. So that was my morning Devo, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 and 24. I pray and hope you get blessed. You could use this as a declaration, as a prayer. Amen. Speak it out of your own mouth. It's so powerful. It's one, one, it's one thing to hear somebody else speaking the word. Amen. But it's another thing entirely when you yourself speak the word out of your own mouth. Amen. Out of your own mouth, you could speak word. And watch what happens because the word is alive. The word is not dead that you just say something in the word and just falls to the ground. Boom. And that's it. No, the word is alive. Sharper than any double-edged sword. And the word of God is able. Able to do what? Able to accomplish everything that it is set to accomplish. It never comes to you back void. Like no power. Sorry, it didn't, it didn't make it. The word always goes forth in power, full power, never loses strength, never loses truth, never loses its power, amen, never loses its authority. So we could dare to hope. 
Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. Lamentations 3, 21 and 24. I hope you have a great rest of the day, a great week. Amen. Lord willing, we'll get back together soon. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, Lord willing, in the name of Jesus, right? And I pray peace, be still, and know that God is who he says he is in your life. So be still and know that God is there and he's here and he's with you and with me. Amen. So God bless. God bless you all. Amen. To the next time on the Morning Devo. Amen. Share this out. Amen. And um, next week I have an exciting announcement. At least it's exciting for me. Hopefully it'll help somebody else out. Amen. Uh, of what is going on in the ministry and a new um, way I can um, connect with everybody um, that comes and connects with me. Amen. Uh, we could do it different ways as well. Amen. Sister Eileen Tirado, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.